So here we go, we're with the lovely Mark 1 Golf GTI, time for some big brakes. Because this goes, it just needs to stop. So we start here. These are the stock brakes, now these calipers do have a particular problem which are very annoying, which I'll detail a bit more later on, but there's a fair bit of play in these pads. No matter what pads you put in them, or your anti-rattle pins, they still rattle. So we're going to stick these big bad boys on, these are G60 calipers. Huge improvement. So we'll just go through a step by step of what we're doing. So there's the brakes and stock, pull all those off and we're left with that. Clean up all your hub and where the caliper brackets bolt. Caliper brackets bolt on like so, get some Loctite on the bolts, get a disc on there, 280 millimeters, and then the carrier goes on and it bolts on the back like this. There's some little spaces that sit under those bolts. Once that on, get your pads on with some uh, copper grease, then your caliper goes on, like so. That's the difference in the disc, quite a sizable difference. And here's the difference of the calipers, as you can see. As a whole, it is a big difference. Now, brake lines. You can use the stock brake lines, but as the caliper sits in a different position, it is gonna foul and catch on that. So you wanna get that out of the way, really. Um, it is sort of to hold, the brake pipe in there but also it runs a risk of cutting it off when you're turning and going over bumps which is not what you want so we need to get rid of that so here we go that's removed and smoothed off so you've got no sharp edges now what we've got here we're just checking there is nice clearance for the brake pipe locked to lock so nothing is under stretch as in the brake pipe isn't maxing out and it's not that's fully locked there and you can see there is loads of room and loads of slack left in that pipe, which is perfect. And obviously the car's jacked in the air, so the shock is at full extension, and we still have plenty of movement left, which is what we want. And then wing it back the other way. Again, full lock, and we have still got plenty of room in the hose, and it is nowhere near hitting anything. Because the last thing you want is that hose to catch something, even a little, a little nick, and you slam on the brakes at one point could burst that hose. Now here is the problem with the old calipers, you can see on these little points here and here where the pad sits, over the years the pad has rattled away and worn the material away from the actual carrier. So as you can see the caliper difference here, you've got a 53mm piston versus a 47mm piston. And obviously work that out as in uh, pressure over the size. That is a hell of a lot stronger than that. So there we go, that's the two difference of calipers. Huge difference, which should make this Mark 1 sit on its nose. On to the passenger side, so same process as the other side, remove it all off, clean the hub up so the disc can sit flat on it, clean the back plate where the caliper carrier bolts to, remove that part so the brake line won't get cut, and there we go, all ready to bleed through. So we need to upgrade now the master cylinder and the brake servo. Why? Well, this is a brake servo. Engine vacuum on a point like that, which pulls this big rubber diaphragm to the left. And when you put your foot on the pedal, it obviously pushes the plunger through the middle of the system into the mass cylinder. Now that diaphragm provides assistance, so you don't have to push as hard on the pedal to get the fluid to move through the mass cylinder. Now the piston that sits inside the mass cylinder, the bigger that is, the more fluid can be moved. So if it's larger, you have more fluid moving with less pedal input. Here's the new brake servo, old on the left, new on the right. Now, 16 valve, 9 inch brake servo is what you want. So it's 9 inch, it's got a bigger diaphragm, which means more assistance can be given. So that's the mass cylinder and slave cylinder all bolted in. It's a simple four bolt at the back, mass cylinder's in there. All the hoses can uh, be manipulated to line up nicely. It's a bit tight on that pipe, but to the untrained eye. So here we go, we've got our spacers on because the wheel was making contact with the caliper. Now it's not. Again, you won't need to do this with all the wheels, but make sure you've got 15 inch wheels, not 14s. These are 15s and they look good. Now you're asking where we can buy these parts from. So, Greatest Motorsport is where we've got the um, adapters from. You can get it from many other places, as you'll see in a minute. So just search simple G60 and you'll come up with an array of bits and bobs. That's what you want there. And there we go. This is a kit we've got. Obviously ours is black, this one's silver. 
and it lists there all the wheels and cars they fit on. Like I said, you can get it from other places. Go to Classic VW. Now, I like Classic VW because even if they're out of stock parts, they always have the part numbers listed, which is very helpful. Again, Bop G60 in there. Delivery is very good in this as well. So here we go, lots of things that are linked to G60. So we've got a different type of brake conversion kit there. We're looking for calipers. There we go. Now these are just brake calipers on their own. Again, you've got the part numbers there. If you can get them as a set, then it's good. If not, you can uh, get the carriers in a minute. What else are we looking at? Uh, brake discs, boom, 280 mil. Again, you can get these off the shelf from most retailers, but then you've got the, yeah, out of stock, but you've got the part number, which is helpful. Again, the Corrado, um, VR6, G60, etc. Now these are the other brake clicks. These are slightly different, they don't need spacers because they're machined out to fit on the hub. Again, you're about three times the price, but um, whichever floats the boat, whichever you want. Now, carriers. So on our favourite auction site, you scroll down and ignore the top one. And that one, uh, there you go. Someone's selling the set there, 250 quid for carriers as well. Another one's, another one's, another set of adapters. There we go, unit 15. You've got the sliders and carriers for what you need there for a reasonable price. Now, again, not affiliate with them, but I've used them before. Good quality parts. Um, you can go back on Classic VW as well. What else do we need? We need brake servo. So Mark II, because it's Mark II Golf or Passat, etc. in the brakes. And then we scroll down, everything else is what we need. So you've got any of the masculines, it'll tell you as well. Which one are we looking for? We are looking for... Not that one. Right, that middle one there, that's the stock one on the Mark 1, which is a 20.65. And the 16 valve one we fitted is... Where is it? There you go, 22 mil. Again, out of stock, but you've got the part number. So then you can put it in your other websites and find it, all your local motor factors. And we've also got, boosh, 9-inch brake servo. Now, I don't think you can get these new anymore. You can get pattern parts or you can get used parts. Um, like I say, you've got the likes of Brendan Moss at Dubstock, where you can source these parts from. So, we've got the big brakes on. So you can see, we've got the G60 brakes. Excuse me if I don't look at the camera, I am driving. So you might notice this car before I've done some work on it previously. Sportline car, one of 500 made, beautiful little car. So this is a 1.9 I think, it's had oversized pistons previously. Um, yeah, so we need to brake. So, calipers are on, discs are on, it's all simple stuff. Um, if you can't, don't take this the wrong way, but if you can't do discs and pads and stuff on your own, then you shouldn't be working on brakes on the cars. Don't mean that in a horrible way. Brakes are very important. So all the brakes are on. We bled them through. Nice firm pedal. Now a couple of points I'll focus on. The brake servo is a 16 valve one. Some people say you need to cut the back of the shaft down where it goes in the clevis pin on the mechanism for the Mark 1. You don't have to if you adjust all the rod. So these being early cars the right hand drive but they've got the mass cylinder on the left hand side so they've got a rod linkage system going across to the pedal now when you first put it on the pedal when it's all connected the pedals like halfway down pointless that is so you need to adjust all that shaft um, south explanatory nuts and bolts um, adjust that so your pedal is at a nice height where you want it so it's literally in line with all the other pedals um, and you've got a nice firm firm pedal really without the engine running also the engine running you've got a vacuum on the servo moving that diaphragm across giving you assistance so you want to make sure you've got a nice firm pedal with the engine off and with the engine running you want a nice soft pedal 
going down sort of halfway until it gets quite tight. Um, this is really good. Uh, what else was that? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, don't need to cut it down, just adjust it. Now, this has got drums on the back still. You can put discs on the back, but to be honest, the back end does not a lot of braking. Um, so the drums are fine. Discs, they look better and they're easy to maintain. Um, so we just get to miles on this. I mean, yeah, the brakes are good. They're obviously new, so they need to bed in a little bit. So we've got some miles on it. Do a little brake test. Nothing too exaggerant. What we're doing, 30. Quiet country road, obviously. Bouncy one. It is wet, so it's probably not the best time to do bake, bread, bake, bread, break bedding in. Straight bit. Yeah, they work. It's so a straight nose in, straight down. Yeah. They're both locking up as well. You can feel it. It's not pulling left or right, which is good. Last thing you want is brakes pulling left or right because that's just going to throw you in a ditch. Which is not really what you want. They're good. Yeah, happy with those. Like I say, they're the biggest bolt on ones you need. Another point, you need 15 inch wheels. If you've got 14 inch wheels, these brakes will not fit under your wheels. Uh, these are 15s. I also had to put 15 mil spacers, as you see, just to clear the caliper because it was touching the back of the wheel. You might not need spacers depending on your wheels. These are stock. VW BBS ones. So if you've got these stock wheels, you need some spacers to clear. Um, if you do get spacers, try and get hub centric ones so the wheel lines up properly um, before you tighten up. You shouldn't have to use, you shouldn't have to rely on the wheel bolts to align the wheel. I'm starting to feel a bit sick from that brake. too noisy with a window so yeah that is I won't say the full I thought that was a fish it's a squirrel um, I won't say the full hog brake conversion because next step would be braided brake hoses and stuff but full hog I mean calipers discs master cylinder and brake servo so we've got a 9 inch brake servo 16 valve golf, simple. You've got a 22 mil mass cylinder instead of a 20.65 being specific. He's not going to be happy with me. This is a dirty road. It'll be fine. Um, road closed. Um, I digress. Yeah, so we've got big discs. Your bigger calipers, so you've got bigger discs, you've got more surface area, 280 mil. Um, you can see from the picture a bit of an increase. You've got larger brake pads, so you've got more surface area clamping force. You've got a larger master cylinder, um, which is getting more fluid out of the brake cylinders. So you've got more clamping force. So all in all, it's definitely closed. Now doing a few more brake stops. Probably won't do much more because I'm starting to feel sick. When they grip, they grip. Now remember these brakes were designed for your G60s, early VR6s, so 200 brake horsepower and a lot heavier car. So when you put them on a car that weighs about 850, maybe 900 kilos because it's a soft top. Some serious braking power. Again, plus you've got the servo and the brake cylinder doing more work. But less pedal input. I do one more and then we'll uh, try not to be sick. Nice clear road. Yeah. Nice even lines on the road where it locked up, obviously it's wet. Yeah, well, happy with that. So there you go, that is how you do a brake conversion on a Mark 1 Golf GTI. Um, 
Simple as that. All the part numbers are in all the links I've scrolled through. Classic BW is great for parts because they have the parts, but also they have the part numbers. So if they're out of stock, go and search somewhere else. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you can. It really helps me out getting these videos done. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for watching.